Hi again, this is um, the continuation of the previous tutorial. If you haven't already started doing the animation class, please look at my uh, last tutorial as this follows straight on from there. So we had just finished the animation class and now we have to uh, put it in our game uh, class so that we can start seeing an animation on the screen. Because at the moment it still looks like this. Okay, so to do that we will need an animation let's just call it animation very creative now okay this is where we use the constructor we need to cre create the animation object so we have a new animation and then we need to put in uh, what we had in our constructor so it needs the content manager content so that's just the content it needs the asset name oh yeah Okay, we need our actual texture for the animation. So let's add our texture. So I am going to use this one. So let's have a look at it. It's just a run animation. And we will need to know some details about it. In fact, the only detail we do need to know about it is how many frames it's got. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's 14 frames the asset name itself is run. Frame speed will put I don't know, each half second each frame and it was uh, 14 was it? And we do want it to loop so that's true. Okay uh, then we need to call the animation dot play animation and that requires the game time. The game time is coming from here. And finally, all we need to do is draw it. So it has its own draw method as well, and it requires a sprite patch. Okay, let's see that in action. And it's not drawing. Okay, that's strange. Okay, let's have a look. So we're calling the draw. Let me just double check, make sure it's got. It's definitely getting all the information. frame height okay let me check that a frame height is wrong should be 32 as well I think okay everything else is there position 100 100 yeah height is 2 okay it's not drawn because of the height why is that so where's it set in height so when we call the constructor which is here so Let's talk frame speed to frame height equals ah yeah we don't want to divide it by the number of frames we want the height to be the full height ah yeah that's more like it okay so now we've got the animation running uh, the collision detection is definitely wrong because it's way too big for the animation you wouldn't be too happy if you're getting hit and it was nowhere near character so like there no I didn't get hit okay so we can change that. So, to do that, we want to change the properties of the rectangle of the player bounds. So, the x coordinate should be, although this is correct, it's 100, 100, the x and y position is the same as the animation, but what if the animation moves then? You want it to move with it. So, you want it to get the position. Okay, excellent. Uh, in the last video, remember, I said I was going to talk to you about properties. Uh, or accessors basically because these are private vari class variables these cannot be accessed out with the class unless we made them public so if I was to make um, position public and then I wanted to get the position here so I just do animation dot position there it is but I don't want to do that that's not good programming because you do want this to be private but you do want people to be able to access it. So to do that we use a property and just call it position as well but use an uppercase P and you'll need the type as well. Okay now if you want it to be read only you just use a get and then return the value of the local position but we want to be able to set it as well so you use the set keyword and this the actual position, the small p there, is equal to the value. So what that will do, 
once I can actually show you is when we go back here and we call the animation object and get the position property so now we can see a big P as well that is getting the value uh, because the rectangle needs to be cast to an int okay so now we can access it from here that's an accessor we could also set the values as well from here so whatever value we were to put in so we would put position x equals whatever the equals is it would set it to the private variable there's a much cleaner way of of uh, being able to access specific variables um, we will need to probably do the same with the frame width and height as well so just repeat what we just did so we want the frame width but in this case I don't want to be able to set it I just want to get the value same with the frame height because we will be wanting our rectangle bounds to be the same height as our size as our animation so that it has decent collision detection okay that looks okay so there's three properties there and let's just start using them so position dot x and int animation dot position dot y so that's now still going to be 100 100 but we don't want the width and height we want it to be the same as the frame width and frame height okay let's see how that that should have the rectangle now there we go so now the collision detection is correct now we can see that it only detects the collision when it hits this, the, the size of the texture so it's, it's quite accurate collision detection now you can still see that it's uh, like the bottom right corner top right corner you know but for most the kind of high speed games you wouldn't really notice that we could get into some more in depth collision detection you know there's some collision methods called per pixel collision detection I'll probably do a tutorial on that as well it is a much better um, much more accurate shall I say algorithm for detecting collision but it's very much processor heavy and it's not uh, viable for massive kind of games it's uh, just too intensive on the, on the process and it would slow down the game if there was so much happening on the screen at once but it is still you know for simple games it's perfect and it will be make it very good fantastic collision detection you can also use um, circles as well uh, instead of rectangles and that is most of the time much better than than rectangle collision but this is the most simplest simple collision detection definitely the the best to get your head around first get used to the techniques uh, make some simple games with it um, in fact let's just let's just improve this one just now what we'll do is just to show how we can alter the animations um, properties using the animation manager we can make a property for the frame speed so what is that as a float and it'd be frame speed so want to if we want to get it it's frame time and if we want to set it we want this dot frame time to be equal to the value we're going to set it and we'll set it this time so you can see how uh, we can change the property using the well we can change the variable a private class variable using the property and let's say when it intersects we want to change the animations frame speed to something quite slow 0.3f and we want to set it back to 50 when it's no longer being collision detection so so the animation should slow down when there's a collision and it will speed back up when there's not a collision that might be a, quite a cool little effect oh of course wait a minute <laughs> it's the other way around okay 50 no wait speed animation frame speed yeah yeah of course it's the other way around 
we want the frames to last longer. So yeah, so it's really slow when it collides. That's not very cool though. Let's make it a little bit more cooler. What's a good value for it? 150. Let's three times slow it down. That was too slow. There we go. That's quite cool. Okay, I can think of quite a lot of effects you could do with that. Um, so that's just a little example of things you can do with this animation class. Now remember, the whole point of this animation class was to help with different types of um, animations. So what other animations have I got here? I've got a hurricane kick. So let's go. One, two, three, four frames, although they don't all look the same size. Let's see if this one will work. I've actually not checked this, so I wonder if it will. Oh yeah, it helps if you actually can hurricane kick. Hurricane kick. Okay, let's see. Hey, there we go. So there's a hurricane kick. And that's how easy it was just to change the animation. But it has completely different height, width properties and frame properties. So now to expand on this, you know, we'll have to create some kind of like uh, lists to contain a lot of different kind of animations and then when you press a key it accesses that animation or you know there's a lot of things we can do and I'll, I'll think of some uh, more tutorials to expand on this animation class. Maybe we have an animation manager as well so that we can have a collection of animations for the player and a collection of animations for an enemy and we'll get them working and we'll continue to expand on on what we've learnt. So thanks very much for watching. Again please post comments for any help, anything or how you could improve it, anything anything really and what you would like to see in future videos. I am just sticking to XNA 2D tutorials at the moment so your feedback is always welcome so thank you very much. Uh, see you next time.